Gather round, boys and girls. Today we'll be opening our Bibles to Genesis to talk about Earth's first pair of brothers, Cain and Abel. Now, once upon a time there were two young boys named Cain and Abel. And since they were the only people on the entire planet other than their parents, they pretty much had run of the place. They didn't have to go to school, they never had to worry about getting picked last for dodgeball, and they never had to wait in lines. Of course, when they started getting older, they had nobody to think about when they masturbated other than their mom, since she was the only woman in the world. But they may do. So all their lives, they grew up listening to their parents tell them all about a beautiful garden that was always sunny and warm, where there was always plenty to eat and nobody ever got a tummy ache, and how they would still live there if their mom wasn't an apple-thieving bitch, or if God had a reasonable set of standards. And while Cain probably should have taken the God not having a reasonable set of standards bit to heart, he didn't. And as we'll learn in a minute, that ended tragically. Now, Cain and Abel took very different paths in life once they got old enough to leave home. Cain became a crop farmer, which doesn't make any fucking sense because there were only five people on the entire planet at that point, so food scarcity wouldn't exactly be a problem. Abel, on the other hand, became a shepherd. That also didn't make any fucking sense because herding sheep is mostly done to get wool, and there were no people in the world to buy wool. So one sheep would pretty much take care of Earth's wool needs, two at the most. And as bizarre as this setup is, boys and girls, enjoy it while you can, because everything from this point on makes even less sense. Anyway, one day, Cain and Abel decided that they should both give God a nice gift, perhaps in the hopes that he would get over his silly apple hang-up and let them back into that garden Mom and Dad always bragged about. So Cain brought some of the vegetables he'd grown, and Abel brought some murdered baby sheep. Well, when God showed up, he went straight to the murdered baby sheep, and he loved them. He told Abel that those were the bestest murdered baby sheep he had ever seen and thanked him profusely for such a thoughtful gift. And then Cain said, well, what about um, my gift? But God completely ignored him because he liked Abel's gift so much more. Well, needless to say, Cain was pretty unhappy, so he went off somewhere to pout. But if there's one thing God likes less than vegetables, it's pouty, whiny bitches. So God asked Cain what was wrong. So Cain said, what the fuck do you think is wrong, dude? I, I mean, those were some pretty good squash back there. And God said, you've got no reason to be depressed, and it's just that your gift sucked. Get a better gift next time, and I'll like your gift too. And then God muttered some enigmatic shit about his sin crouching at Cain's door, and he left. So Cain decided to invite his brother out into a field and brutally murder him, because apparently five people on the planet was starting to seem crowded. Well, this made God very angry, even though he wouldn't tell anybody that murder was against the rules for a couple thousand years. So God went to Cain and said, where the hell is Abel, dude? And Cain said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Which you have to admit is a pretty ballsy thing to say to God. Well, God didn't care much for that response. So he cursed Cain and told him that from now on, when he tilled the ground, no crops would grow. And Cain said, well, now that you told me that, I'm just not going to till the ground. And after he thought about it for a second, God realized that, yeah, it probably would have been better not to tell him about the curse until he'd tilled some land. So he decided to also put a mark on Cain so that everybody in the world would always know that he was a murderer. And Cain said, well, the only other people in the world are my parents and my little brother, so I'm not sure how much good the mark will do. And God said, well, sure, but someday there will be other people. And Cain said, well, how will they know the mark means I'm a murderer? And God said, I'll tell them. And Cain said, well, why don't you just tell them I'm a murderer instead? And God said, shut up, man, I'm still new at this. So Cain wandered off, and somehow there were other people whose existence completely contradicts everything that's happened in the Bible up to this point. So Cain decided to hang out with them. And eventually, they made him their leader. Of course, like all stories in the Bible, this one has a very important moral. In fact, it has three. Number one, vegetables aren't as good as murdered baby sheep. Number two, God is a pernicious, carnivorous asshole. And number three, and most importantly, your brother might murder you in a field for no reason at any time. Sleep tight, boys and girls. The and